What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today I'll be reviewing yet another beer from the Great Lakes Brewing Company, and they're out of Cleveland, Ohio, and this is their Chill Wave, and this is a part of their Imperial IPA series. So they're calling this one Imperial IPA. That comes in at 9% alcohol by volume, 80 IBUs at the time of review. This can is just under two months old, so I can't believe I have not reviewed this beer yet on the channel. Uh, when this was first released, I think it was back in 2013 or 14, so it was like nine or 10 years ago. Uh, this was one of my favorite Imperial slash double IPAs on the market back then. Um, mosaic hops weren't necessarily like brand new, but they, you know, everybody wasn't using mosaic like they do now. And this was brewed with mosaic and it's still brewed with mosaic. Uh, I think they're using nugget and cascade in addition. And I just love this beer. I thought it was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, one of the first like, um, Imperial IPAs that I really loved. And uh, yeah, I just can't believe I haven't reviewed it. So we're reviewing it now. They do have a little spiel here on the side. We'll read it says, inspired by the North Coast's dedicated and sometimes chilly surf community, our fully stoked double IPA will melt the ice in your beard and never lose its balance. So um, I did decipher that this is just under two months old, but it does have a best by date of April 17th of 2023. So I think they give about four months on these cans and we're like smack dab in the middle. So anyway, and I've had this super fresh. I've had this, you know, a couple months old and it's always been quite tasty. So uh, they also use a honey malt in here. And I feel like a lot of the old school, you know, like Hop Slam, this beer, a couple others, uh, Ithaca Flower Power, they use honey malt. And I think it just really helps uh, the balance of the beer, but the enjoy enjoyability factor for me personally, like it really does help it out. So anyway, yeah, this looks like one of your really, really old school Imperial IPAs. It, it, you know, it, it just, it has that deep, dark, almost like caramel color. Um, it, there's a decent haze to it. You hold it up to the light. Yeah, it's a little bit hazy, uh, but you know, there's some clarity. I can see my hand on the other side. Has about a finger of a straight up uh, tan colored head. Looks pretty creamy. Yeah, it kind of looks like what I remember this beer looking like. Let's see what it smells like. <sighs> nice. So the beauty about this beer, at least to me, is that mosaic, and I, I would like to speak to you, you fine folks out there when it comes to mosaic hops. I feel like back in the day with mosaic, when it first came to the forefront and was prominent, I used to get blueberry, like a lot of folks. They, they would get dank blueberry, and I would get that. Over time, though, mosaic for me has kind of transformed into like other notes, but it's still in the berry realm, but it's not quite blueberry. It's kind of like a boysenberry or like a nondescript red berry, maybe even like a red raspberry, something like that. And this is bringing me back to when I first smelled mosaic, I'm not necessarily getting dank blueberry, but blueberry is here, which is nice. What is that? Oh, it's just so fruity. It's like a fruit cup, right? There's, I would say, there's blueberry, maybe red raspberry. Uh, there's pineapple in here. Some citrus undertones. And then you get the malt because older beers like this, you could definitely tell there was malt here. And the malt is, again, it's like a honey kind of um, characteristic. It's like a honey, honey wheat bread kind of malt or like a honey, like a toasted, maybe a toasted white bread with like a drizzle of honey. It's definitely more malt forward than a lot of beers nowadays. You know, everything's about hops and the hop shining and whatnot. This is one of those old school beers where you get the hop character all the fruity goodness, but then you're also, it's intertwined with the uh, base malt. There's also a slight like floral piney edge to this one. You're gonna hear some sirens apparently because it's in the background. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Yeah, see, here's the thing about this beer. If you're a new school hop head that maybe has got into craft beer and started trying craft beer with all kind of New England style IPAs and all the crazy double, triple dry hop beers nowadays, and you don't like the taste of malt or you don't think malt is something you enjoy, like I don't feel like this is a beer for you because this is this has an old school kind of soul to it, right? It has some new school kind of characteristics, but this is an old school beer, right? This is this is a beer that was first introduced, you know, 10 years ago, nine, 10 years ago. So it, it's one of those beers where I feel like a newer person might drink this and be like, ah, oh, it's too malty, or it's a malt bomb, or it's, it's just not, you know, hoppy enough for me. And I can understand that, and I get that. For me though, it's a beautiful harmony. It's a great, greatly balanced Imperial IPA. Let's go body and mouthfeel. 
Buy on this higher side of medium, lower side of full, 9%. Might be a touch thin, but I enjoy that when it comes to hot forward beers. I don't like them to be thick, syrupy, viscous. I enjoy that. The mouthfeel is an old school mouthfeel. Very crisp on the palate. Um, it, it's a, there's a smoothness to it on the finish, but this is not going to be creamy. It's not going to be soft. So body and mouthfeel are appropriate for me. The taste, I get toasted. I shouldn't even say toasted. We'll just say straight up white bread with a drizzle of honey right at the forefront. Dips underneath the palate with you. It's um, omnipresent. It's, it's always there, and it's always carrying... Uh, all the rest of the characteristics never steps in the way, but it's always noticeable, right? There may be a touch of like a caramel malt. Yeah, a little bit of caramel. But right after that, I get blueberry. Um, I get red raspberry. There is a little bit of like a pineapple, peachy kind of feeling to the beer as well. With underlying citrus, grapefruit, orange, and it's sweeter. Passes through about two thirds, three quarters of the way through the palate, it starts to dry out. This is semi to full on dry with a mild to moderate bitterness. I think the dryness and the bitterness kind of, you know, combine forces to stop the sweetness from being overblown. And I get a little bit of like this dank, earthy kind of feeling on the finish. Here's the most impressive thing for an older school, an older recipe beer. This hides the 9% extremely well. Little warming in the chest, nothing on the palate. This is just really good. Um, but like I am in every review, I got to be honest with you. This beer used to kind of, I don't say blow my socks off, but this used to get a really monster score for me. I'm talking like four, five, four, six, one of the best Imperial IPAs. And the, the simple fact of the matter is why I still really enjoy this beer. And dare I say, I almost love this beer still to this day. I just feel like it has a good balance. I can't go necessarily as high as that four, five, and four, six back in the day. That was a different era. It was 10 years ago. And IPAs, and certainly Imperial IPAs, were, were few and far between when it comes to the ones that I enjoy. Like for every 10 IPAs I drank, I may have liked one or two of them. Where nowadays... You know, you got hazies, you got, you know, some um, some other beer, like even West Coast IPAs. I'm really starting to dig a lot, but this is still really good. So I don't know why I'm, I'm like, I'm going to apologize. I'm like apologizing in advance for me not giving this the score that I did back on the day. But it's a fact matter is that my palate's in a different place. That said, this beer right here is still really good. So Chill Wave, a part of their Imperial IPA series from Great Lakes. I'm going to give this a high 425 out of 5. I'm going to go 4.35. So um, it's still just a really, really good Imperial IPA. Like I said, be forewarned. If you just got into craft beer in the last, say, three to five years, and you don't like uh, tasting malt in IPAs, or you don't like IPAs that look like this, you're probably not going to enjoy this one. But this has... You know, enough of everything, I think, for most folks to enjoy to some degree. Um, then again, if you're an old school IPA lover, you probably will like this more so than a new school uh, IPA lover. Price point availability. I forgot what I paid for this. Usually I'm on top of that and I remember everything. I want to say this was like $14 to $16 a four-pack. I think I paid like just under 4 bucks for that can. So if this is, you know, $13.99 to $15.99, it's a great value for something that's 9%. Highs the alcohol well. Um, it's a really good old school Imperial IPA. So, you know, upwards of 16 bucks, yeah, it's great value. And as far as the distro goes, I'm trying to think Great Lakes. Great Lakes doesn't get, like, I always feel like Great Lakes gets better distribution than I think. But I think they get, you know, throughout some parts of the Midwest, into the Mid-Atlantic, maybe into New England, maybe a little bit down south. But they're not huge, although this is a part of, like, the shelfy beers I do um, uh, each month. You know, you probably have to live in the Midwest slash Northeast region to probably get your hands on this one. But if you do see Great Lakes stuff, this is, like, their latest or one of their latest um, seasonals. Uh, this is, like, the late... I think late winter, early spring seasonal. And uh, yeah, so you got until, according to the can, April 17th to uh, drink this before it's bad, totally terrible. I think this will hold up for a couple more months, but even with just under two months of age on it, it's drinking great. So yeah, anyway, if anybody out there has had this beer before, post the comment section, let me know what you thought about it. Um, are you somebody who had this one, you know, nine, 10 years ago and you had it recently? If so, definitely let me know. Is it the same as you remember? Because this is kind of the same that I remember. It's just 
it's not as impactful or hitting me or resonating with me the same way that it did nine, 10 years ago, but it's still really delicious. So anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review here on the Beer Patrol to the next one. Cheers.